Okay, so we've got that mid follow of the translate set up. So now we just want to get this uh, rotate to work. So what we need to do in here is get these. So we've got these um, up controls. So we've got the aim controls. And we've got the up controls. And we want the, what we want is the aim control to aim at the upper control. So where, wherever we move this, it's going to be looking at it. And then we can use the up as its objects up so if this was to move down and rotate we don't want it to think the world's up we want it to take it as this object which will be constrained to this so to start off with what we'll actually do is uh, shift, uh, select the end antenna control shift select the up tie and just go to constraint parent do the same on the other side constraint parent or hit G and then these aim controls, what we're actually going to do is just parent them to these point controls, these translate ones that we made earlier. Because we just want them to follow along. Okay, so now what we need to do is use an aim constraint. So I'm just going to go, we select the top, so select the driver, and then select the driven. So what's going to be driving the rotation? It's going to be aiming at this. So this is going to be what drives the rotation. The driven is going to be the aim tie control. We'll just go to constraints and aim in the option box. So in here I'll just reset the settings and we didn't align this to anything so I'm just gonna put maintain offset on and it doesn't matter at the moment because we just want everything zeroed out in there. So we don't want to have that flip and add a few translates in here or rotates. And then the next one is the aim vector so this is an x, y and v value so we don't want it to aim down x which would be down the x axis we actually want to aim the top of this upwards towards this control so we're going to put a 0 in the x and put a 1 in the y the up vector again is going to be a y because we're aiming it up towards the y and the world up type instead of vector which would just be the y position if this control was to rotate 90 degrees, it's going to flip this control to the negative x, so then we'd have to put a negative x in here. But then this is going to be changing our orientation all the time, so instead I'm going to choose, instead of vector, I'm going to put object up. And what object are we going to select? We're going to select this top up control we made earlier. So as I rotate this, we can see it's keeping to the top of this antenna control. So wherever it moves, that's going to be what we want to take as up. So I'm just going to select that, copy the name, paste it into the world up object text box. And with these settings still selected, I'm just going to quickly select the top, the driver, select the driven again, which is the aim, control, and just hit apply. And then I'm going to do the same to the other side, select the driver, select the driven, this time renaming it to the left object up and hit apply and then I'll just close that so now we can see as we move this about you can see that mid control is rotating to aim towards this top control so we're getting the mid position preserved and also the rotation is aiming towards that bit, that top control okay so now all we need to do is bring back our hyper shade and for for any reason, say so like if you can't see these nodes, if you've closed the hypershade, what we can do, we can do is go to Windows, render and edit, hypershade again, and then either in the utilities, we can try find those blend colors we worked with, and we didn't rename them yet, so it, it'll be these blend colors here. Graph the inputs and outputs. Or we could actually select one of these objects, like select the follow group that we made, which is this group here just to get back to that graph and we can remove select these constraints we'll have to remove selected from graph and we'll just rearrange this again so this is the right side or the left side either but we're going to put it over here so we're just rearranging the graph so we can visually see it again okay so we've got that graph back and we can see that the rotate blinkers we're not doing anything with them at the moment. 
So I'm going to add in these two. So graph, add selected to graph, making sure this is the right. So I want the the right one over here and the left one over there. Now we can see here there's a line coming between here, so we know that's to translate. We can actually see that if we hover over it. So we want to make sure we're assigning it to this one, which is the rotate. So I'm going to take the rotate and put it into the color one. And the same on the opposite side, take the rotate into the color one. And then again, we'll connect these up to the actual offset groups. So take the output, put it into the rotate, take the output, and put it into the rotate. So these two groups now have translate and rotate. So moving this top control about, we'll just test this. You can see it's moving with it. If we put the follow antenna to one on both of these, and just test that. And we can see now we're preserving that position. We've got the mid position, we've got that rotation in there. So I can just start rotating these about, moving them into position. And that's great. So cool, got that working. And we can just go and show all so we can see the joints, how that's going to be looking. So we can get that nice sort of spline smoothing it out from the ribbon. And then at any point we can select this control and blend smoothly between follow or not follow. And later on we will add some mail scripting so we can key that and then snap snap the control back so if we're switching from following to not following the control is going to stay in its position so this way we can give the animator control right at the end with the mail script we can either ask them do we want it to blend between them or do we want it to snap between them and then having this sort of node graph set in there it means that at any point if they can't find the mail script or if we're spreading this rig about the internet or someone doesn't know how to use the mail script and if they're quite new to rigging and they're using this to learn to animate with then they've got that follow antenna in there and they can just set that wherever they need to okay so the last thing we need to do is just take these tie controls bring up the extra nodes and just hide them and I'll just clean up these I'll take off the local rotative axes on those two okay so it's looking quite good I'll do the same down here take, the, take off the local rotate axis of this. And this is where sometimes it's a good idea to keep taking the local rotate axis off these objects because sometimes you might not know which one it is so there it was the joints so we had to go through each thing to just, just double check which one it was. Okay so we've got rid of them now and in the next lesson what we're actually going to do is take what we've learned with the ribbon spines for the antennas and the spine of this character. So this character is pretty much overall quite finished. We've got the the whole body, the arms, the antennas moving about. need to add a bit more control for this uh, back shell. But for the main bulk of the body, we've actually got quite a lot of the work done. But what I want to do now is, because we've quite comfortable with these in, uh, ribbon spines, we've added quite a few in, what I want to do is add a ribbon spine to the arms so much like the antennas we can get these really nice curves going on so what I want to do is have the arm actually drive a ribbon spine and that way what I'm going to show you in the next few tutorials hopefully will show you how more advanced we can get and it's not going to be too difficult because we can take it step by step but this is the case where we start to rack deformers up so we can, can start doing some of these wacky things that you would expect in 2D animation so we can get his arm to sort of like bend and have a wave going down it like a Mexican wave but still having easy animation controls to rotate and move that about okay so in the next tutorial I'm just going to go through adding the ribbon spines to the arms